Okay, well, we're back again. I hope everybody's doing well and you're having an interesting winter and you're noticing all of the things that are taking place on the planet right at this particular point. Uh, I've got a request, several requests here for different videos, and I'm going to give an attempt at, the, at this one here because it's actually kind of near and dear to me at this particular moment. And it's the, uh, the aspect here of uh, clearing ancestral lines, templates, traumas, and other sort of paraphernalia. And this seems to be coming up big time for a lot of people. And there are a few other people that are pretty much coming to the end of it. And being as I'm um, 75 years of age, I've been around for a while, uh, and I was born in 1944, and I was also born uh, to talk about ancestral lines, is every time there is some kind of violence, or every time there is a war, or every time there is any kind of calamity where people victimize in some way shape or form other people be it on a singular scale or on a global scale and this is just the way that I'm going to kind of uh, project it or share it with you there is created what's called a thought form. That thought form exists as an energy. Uh, if some of you have ever been in a house where violence has been uh, committed, you can, if you have any kind of empathic abilities at all, you can sense and feel it. It's the same thing in some countries if you go to a place where a battle, where a lot of people have taken place and have died, uh, you can sense and feel the thought form that's been created. And in some cases, you may find some people who are still there, living in that thought form consciousness reality, uh, that some of you may be able to see and feel. And some of them may be repeating the same trauma or the same thing over and over again as they're caught in a time loop where they can't move on. So what's happening at this particular point in time is um, these ancestral patterns, and everyone has them. There's a lot of us right now who are second and even third generation from the First and Second World War. And right now, we are releasing these patterns. Now, I have to kind of get into this for a moment just to kind of explain it to you. During the First and Second World War, there was no such thing as um, what they call uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. Uh, was not existent in the thoughts and the minds of people. So we had a whole generation of soldiers come back from the Second World War and wars after that, the Vietnam War uh, in the US, and every country has had some kind of wars going on. And people who are involved in these, and even people who are in high stress jobs, uh, people who are service to the community, uh, uh, fire departments, police department, all of these people are now finding out they're suffering from uh, post-traumatic stress and what happens is they can create within their consciousness and within their mind based on the experiences that they've gone through traumatized bodies traumatized emotional and mental bodies and more importantly than the rest of them they can experience 
traumatized energetic templates within what I call the etheric body. And the etheric body is what I call the second body. It's a duplicate of the physical right down to every organ and cell that's in it. And if this particular individual should have a family, have children, those particular templates of the trauma itself, the energetic part of it, can be and is transferred to any of their offspring going through one generation to the other. So you may have <coughs> uh, people right now who are in their late teens or 20s who may be experiencing traumas in regards to someone in their family who is going through a generational war or some sort of violence or whatever. And it goes right from the big picture and it scales right down to the smallest ingredients at this particular point in time in our, in our lives. The bottom line here is this, is <coughs> we're right on the cusp now of a very important sequence of events where there are quite a few people who have gone through the evolutionary process, who have reached the point where they can really now move into higher states of consciousness and a higher state of body, incarnate and physical, and a higher state of mind, mental and emotional experience. So what has to happen is you cannot, you cannot take any of these traumatized energetic templates contained within the sheath bodies, the etheric body, but most importantly, that are contained in the mental body and the emotional body. And what's happening is we have a lot of mental disorders, all right, that people are experiencing, anxiety, panic attacks. Oh, let me comment about panic attacks, panic attacks for just a moment. If I'm correct in the way I'm uh, going to explain this, is panic attacks is when somebody has some kind of fear or something that comes up and it just overwhelms them, but they have no uh, no understanding of what the fear is. It seems to be an unresolved fear that just manifests all of a sudden. This is an example of what I'm calling a trauma or uh, an, ancest an ancestral line in their family or their bloodline that's now being made manifest and it's purging off of them and it can manifest through them on a continual basis. For example, I'll give you another example. <clears throat> My mom, <clears throat> bless her soul, was a constant worrier. She worried so much about everything going through the whole of her life, she actually developed a lot of mental disorders. Now, my father, being a soldier in the Second World War, was in the tank car. And when he came back, and I didn't realize this until just recently, he obviously suffered from post-traumatic stress syndrome, big time. Because his behavior as we were growing up, my brother and I, was erratic. He became addictive, abusive, and physically and mentally and emotionally abusive to everybody in the family. So both my mother and my father, and a lot of you will relate to this, were in that situation to make matters even worse, if I can put it that way. And I know I just emphasized the, the worst, and the S came out as a whistle, and I just mentioned. I got a chip in the tooth here, people, and it's going to come out with the S sounding that way. There's not a damn thing I can do about it. And if some of you are having a problem with it, then you're just going to have to bear with it or tune me out, okay? Because there's nothing I can do about it. I've got a chip and I'm not getting it fixed. That's the bottom line. So anyways, I was saying, during the Second World War, to give you an example, the character of my mother and my father, and you can put this into a grand scale, work it into your own family, were both suffering when the war was over and from post-traumatic stress, and it manifested in whatever shape and form. So what happened was, is by the time my mother, going through the worry syndrome, all right, reached the age of 50, she was di diagnosed as agoraphobia, and I'm sure a lot of you know what that is. She was paranoid about going anywhere. Couldn't even go to the house because she would suffer anxiety attack, and it got so bad that none of us, even myself, would even take her shopping because she was just an extreme basket case in the car trying to get her into a shopping center and then getting into the shopping center 
was a horrific experience. Now, what's happened is, at the same time, keep in mind, when I was born, I was born in the UK during the bombing. And at that particular point in time, my mom used to tell me that we used to have to go to the air raid shelters or the bomb shelter, whatever the hell you call it. And she said a lot of times we didn't make it in time. So she told me that we spent quite a few times under a big wooden table. Her and I were holding me in her arms while the bombs are going off all over the place. And here I am, okay, just a baby. And I realized I got traumatized also. And this is the situation that's going on now. All of this ancestral templating, and if you really want to know what it is in your family tree, just take a look at your own kind of mental condition, the, the state of your mental body. What kind of idiosyncrasies do you have? What little hang-ups do you have? And then take a look in your family origin, and you might see nothing from your parents. But what about your grandparents and your grandparents before, or your, their parents before them? This is where the ancestral templating comes out. And it all has to move because we're moving into higher states of consciousness. And in these higher states of consciousness, what's happening is this, just to kind of give you an example. When people are having experiences in the dream state, they're having dream state training out where they're having experiences and they're moving into different timelines and dimensions. And they're having difficulty doing this because of the traumas. The traumas are getting in the way and filtering into some of this stuff, and it's confusing it all. So this is why the ancestral stuff is, is going on. Now, the other thing is this, is people are throwing in, that when they're having these types of experiences where they're releasing traumas and thought forms and experiences, they're calling it karma, all right? I, I'm very familiar with the thought or the theme about karma. But karma believes that if you do a wrong, you have to come back and correct it or whatever kind of thing. I want to mention something here, and, and this is why I think a lot of people are having difficulty with religious belief systems right now uh, of all natures. We need to remember that this is a school. <coughs> Excuse me. We come here in a lot of cases because we have no choice, because we keep coming back, because we keep thinking we have these things we have to equal up, or if there are four. The only thing that I do know for something is if you do something here in the physical that go against already of the preconceived laws of the land that we have, there are going to be consequences. However, just to add a little icing to the cake, I want you to think about something here for a moment. Everywhere in our society right now, there are people who think that the only purpose in being here, and this is a lot in the spiritual community also, is they just want to be with their twin flame and they want to live in the birds and be happy and be in love and have the romance and the rest of all of that stuff. And a lot of the people I think that's all it's about is just having a relationship, raising a family, being successfully at a career or developing or whatever. Look, this is a school. Think about this for a moment. You're coming in at a soul level. This is a school. So if that's what a lot of people are oriented towards, a relationship, family, and falling in love and romance, then you have to think that that's the sole purpose of every soul coming back in. Before they come in, just think about this for a moment. Every soul, all they want to do is meet their twin flame or their soulmate while they're in here, fall in love, have a relationship, maybe develop a few creative abilities, go home, and that's it. This is a school. I wonder, has it ever crossed the mind of a lot of the spiritual people out there that everyone, every soul that comes in doesn't come in just to have a relationship, fall in love, and have great sex and barbecue on the weekend and go to the Super Bowl on Sunday. This is a school. Many can come in here and choose whatever vocation and, and, and every kind of experience that they want. So if you're going to believe in karma, 
then <coughs> you have to <coughs> excuse me, you have to put it this way. You must you have to believe that everybody that comes in wants to be good. You have to believe that every soul that comes in wants to be nice. You have to believe that every soul wants to be authentic. Every soul wants to be compassionate. Has it ever occurred to you that there are people who come in who want to experience being killed? Has it ever experienced to you, uh, ever come to you in your thought or your mind, there are people that come in for the purpose of just experiencing some different type of lifestyle? You see, we don't think that way. We don't. So when you when you don't when you don't think that way, then you have to come into the place in the law of karma. The laws of karma were not created out there. They were created here as a means of keeping humans contained in a belief system that is very, very restrictive. And it's a traumatized situation that brings this type of thing out. I don't know how many times I've heard myself, well, my twin flame and I, or my soulmate and I, whatever label you want to use, we're working through our karma. And then they validate it by saying, well, I've had dreams and past life experiences. There is no such thing as past life experiences. It's all sequential. So again, this particular belief system has to be cleansed out of the ancestral timeline also. So this is what is taking place with a lot of the situations that's going on. It's very difficult because right now when I talk to a lot of people, a lot of people are going through issues. They're difficult. They're challenging. They're having physical, mental, and emotional conditions manifest that they never thought would manifest within them. They're wondering where they're coming from, and this is what is happening. Now, it's my own personal belief and experience that these situations are temporary. They won't last indefinitely, and they will be eliminated. But as you will know, and most of you who have experienced Kundalini awakening, if you have <clears throat> gained any knowledge at all, you know full well that one of the things that can happen with a Kundalini awakening is you can have Kundalini awakening manifest in your physical bodies genetic and hereditary traits or problems. In other words, you can have all of the symptoms of a certain disease that may be in your family. You can have all of the symptoms of having a heart condition you can manifest viruses. You can manifest different physical aches and pains and lumps and bumps. And all of these are ancestral. Your body is cleansing these out. So the same thing has to happen to the mental body and the emotional body. However, it will usually, as a general rule, happen to the physical body first because we have to have the physical vehicle in some kind of remotely good shape, and I'm not talking about being an athlete, I'm talking about being a remotely healthy and vibrant physical vehicle to a point, to be able to work with and sustain the mental and the emotional and the etheric changes that are going to take place at a later time. Now, the other thing that I want to mention here also, speaking again about ancestral, Sexual abuse is, by definition, in every soul group, in every family, in every bloodline. And some people will say, well, there's no sexual abuse in my family. Bullshit. Somewhere in everybody's family, there is sexual abuse. It may drop a, ge a generation or two, all right, but it's ancestral. Sexual abuse has been going on for thousands of years through generations, through population, forever. That's a long time. That's at least two weeks or more. <laughs> so, this is something that's coming out. And again, where is it coming out? Most people, if it's going according to plan, are experiencing this in the dream state, 
and they're experiencing new experiences of sexual contact or sexual union, if you want to call it that. And they call it the, the astral planes, okay? That's incorrect. You cannot experience a cleansing and purging of sexual energy in the astral planes. You have to go to a higher dimension to be able to do that. So please don't say astral planes because you're not. If you're having a pleasant experience with it, it's higher up in vibration. If it's a sexual experience that is morbid uh, and whatever, it's probably down in the astral planes and you're cleansing it out of yourself. Don't go into panic mode if you're having it. It's, you're doing the ancestral stuff. So you can see what I'm saying is the ancestral, clearing the ancestral template is not just particularly one thing. It's a host of things that has to be done. All right. The other thing I want to mention here is this, is in many cases, a great many of you in the spiritual community know this, and you've already experienced it, where you will develop, you will develop flu-like symptoms. And I've had it happen several times in the course of my life. Flu-like symptoms, okay, the cough, the wheezing, the breathing, and all of that kind of stuff, and yet it's not contagious. All right? So, and this is quite common. And what does it do? It's cleansing and purging the physical body again. So take a look around you, what's happening right now. I looked the other day, and apparently right now there are 15 million people who are experiencing the flu in the U.S. 15 million. Okay, and that's not including this new little novel virus that they say that's manifesting right now. So the whole thing here of this ancestral template is a natural course of evolution that's taking place because there's going to be a large number of people who are going to shift into higher states of consciousness and they're going to manifest a different kind of body than they have now at this particular point. Now, I don't mean it's going to be totally different, but it's going to be totally energetically different and etherically different because all of these templates are not there. So, having said that, look at it this way. When people come in, and I said they choose what they want to do, and I will tell you something to be repetitive. Everyone who comes in to physical reality does not choose to just come in to experience a romance or relationship and getting together with their twin flame. They do pick other vocations, which shows throughout our world of what's going on. This is a school. It's a school for everything and anything you want to do. That's what it is. So therefore, in the school, we're now doing a cleansing and a purging of all of the stuff that has been created here. I've said this before. We have in the astral planes people, souls, who have been repeating cycle after cycle. If someone ever tells you you're an old soul, I wouldn't go around bragging about it. All right? I wouldn't. If someone tells you you're a young soul and you've only been here a couple of times, that I would go around bragging about. But if someone tells you you're an old soul, I wouldn't brag about it at all. Duh. Okay? Sometimes it takes a long time for us to get it. So, while all of this is happening, it's changing that template. It's re removing the ancestral line. Anybody can go back and take a look and see what their ancestral templating is about. Because you'll be notified in the dream state and the experiences in your mental and emotional body. The idea is this, okay, and I'm going to mention this. From the templating of my mother and my father, now at this particular point in my life, and this frustrated me for a great deal, is I started to experience the same thing that my mother did, agoraphobia, afraid to go outside, afraid to go anywhere, 
plus anxiety, a lot of it, all of the time, and I'm experiencing it. And I don't like it very much, period. So when I used to say, well, I got it from my mom, she templated it with me, and all of this, that, and the other stuff, so I had somewhere to transfer it to. So I used the old transference trick of uh, blaming it on my mom, she gifted it to me. Well, wonderful. Finally, I came up with a solution that's workable for me. I don't know if it applies to anybody else, but what I decided to do is own it. I own the anxiety that I create for myself. So once I became self-aware that I was doing this and I owned it and stopped blaming it on my mom who passed me the template through the ancestral lines, think about what I just said, people. Instead of blaming my parents or <clears throat> the transference that I received or transferring it to somebody else, I owned it as my own. Because in order for you to manifest a template that's been uh, passed to you by your parents or your bloodline or your ancestral tree, you have the template, but you have to bring it into active consciousness by tapping into it. And in a lot of cases, people don't do this intentionally. It just happens. But if you're self-aware enough, you can actually catch yourself doing this. And when you do this, what happens is you become aware that you have activated that potential template within yourself. And once you become aware of it, then you can do something about it, which is what I've been doing. What I've noticed in the past is this, is what I've been doing is, I, whenever I was, just to give you an example, whenever I was going to go out somewhere lately, I would notice I would start to get very, very anxious. And I'd start seeing things, everything, could this go wrong, could that go wrong? You know, am I going to be okay? And I would be nervous and upset, all this kind of stuff. And I would keep seeing it in my head, and I just automatically keep doing it. So obviously the symptoms got worse. Once, however, I owned it, I then decided because now I own it, this ancestral template that I inherited from my bloodline, which goes back to the Second World War. That's a long time ago. That's how far it goes back. That's where this template, this ancestral template comes from. And this can apply also to alcoholism, drug addiction, and any other kind of condition that's manifest that's not conducive to the person's well-being and health. So what I started doing is whenever I found myself, because you're self-aware, you have to be self-aware, you won't even notice you're doing it. You can actually prevent yourself from going into a panic attack or into a anxiety situation by changing the channel. Because what happens is this, is we are creatures of habit, um, we can be as positive and negative as we are literally programmed with. So what I started doing was this, is I started exercising every time that I started thinking and seeing in that way. I grab hold of it right away and I change it and I put it into a positive spin and I see myself going positive, going out there, being confident, no problem, all that kind of stuff. I know it's not going to happen overnight, but it is going to happen. This is how you deal with ancestral templates. That's how you deal with them, all right? I can do this, I can do this because I'm awake and I'm aware. But for someone who is addicted, who has addiction, alcohol, or drugs, this is not possible at this point until they can get off the drugs or the alcohol or whatever they're doing. It's going to continue on. So the person needs to be aware that if they have the addiction or the drug addiction, and this is going to be extremely difficult for people who do drugs, for people who do alcohol, it's a little better because the damage is not as bad. You can catch yourself and you can know that you've inherited a template and you got caught in it and it can be fixed and repaired and done away with. So all of this is happening globally, all over the place, especially in the spiritual community, there are people now who are coming to an end of this. And when you're coming to an end of this, the good news is, is you really begin to notice changes within the emotional body, the mental body. You become more and more detached from the world as it exists right now, today. 
and all of the things that are in it. And let's be honest, okay, let's be honest. They are two common denominators in our society that is part of everyone. One, we are consumers. Two, we are predators by nature. Think about it. I don't care how nice you are, how authentic you are. We all are predators by nature. As long as you live in three-dimensional reality, you consume and you're predatory by nature. That two patterns have to go. They have to go. So whatever template or ancestral line that is there, that prevails and makes you or assists you or promotes you in going in those two directions, consumer and predator, has to come out. And each one will have variations in each and every individual. And the reason for that is a good number of you are going into the 12 chakra system and you have them already templated within you. Okay, again, I use the word template. And I'm going to make just a little statement here. One of the things that happened to me when I went to the school in the dream state, and the teachers were there just to give you an example. The one thing that they told us, and there were five of us, six of us there, and I think I'm the only one that actually did anything with it, to my knowledge, to this point. What they said was, humanity was going to go through a quantum shift and evolution of consciousness. In order to do that, they would need to move beyond the seven chakra system. The seven chakra system is all based on ancestral templating. Are you with me? Now listen closely, people. This is friggin' important here, especially for you knowledgeable spiritual people. Catch the wave here. The seven chakra system has been around for thousands of years. The process of evolution has been around for thousands of years. You can see it in the animal kingdom. Now you're going to see it in the human species. All right. So when I was in the school, they informed us that the seven chakra system is no longer applicable for the state of consciousness that we're going through. We needed an additional chakra system, a 12 chakra system, and this 12 chakra system is contained directly, directly in the physical body and the physical etheric body. It does not exist outside. There are chakras outside of the physical body. They are not part of the 12 chakra system. The seven chakra system contains all of the ancestral trauma going back a thousand years pertinent to each and every soul group, to each and every bloodline, to each and every race, culture, you name it. In order to contain the higher state of consciousness that is going to come out of the seven chakra system, you have to go into the cocoon phase, the spiritual awakening, and become self-aware of what's going on to transition into a new template that has been gifted to humanity, the 12 chakra system, being that only two of them are brand new. The others, three, are chakras that have been dormant for an extended period of time. We had them before, but because of a drop in consciousness and the energy that achieved the consciousness, they went dormant automatically. So as we're transitioning into the 12 chakra system, which allows us to experience different dimensions and realities, the mental, the emotional, the ancestral, the etheric, has to change and evolve. Voila! People dealing with all of these traumas, all of these ancestral stuff coming up, 
And they say, well, why am I dealing with this shit? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you volunteered for it. You see, most of you think that you all come in to do fall in love, have a relationship, and that's all you keep on doing every lifetime you come back and maybe you develop a little career smarts or some kind of thing. No, that's not the way it works. There are people that come in here to live violent lifestyles. There are people that come in here to scam you, hose you, ridicule you, kill you, torture you, because it's a school. We can do anything and everything we want here. Anything and everything. The only thing is, if you do it with the laws that are current now, there are consequences. So there's no such thing as karma. There's no such thing as right and wrong. It doesn't exist. It's belief systems and ancestral templating that have created the laws of the land that we have now, which is why things are changing at this particular point in time. So as we transition into this 12 chakra system, and let me tell you something, something, let me tell you something. All of this stuff you see going on now, the Kundalini awakenings, the heart center awakenings, and all of the stuff that you're going through, <clears throat> okay, eventually this purging of ancestral templates will be done, completed. And by that time what will happen is we have moved into those new states of consciousness. Now I'm going to mention this. Some of you out there right now, and myself personally, have experienced what's called a temporary view of physical ascension. Now, what is physical ascension? Spiritual ascension simply means you ascend after you die in the body. Physical ascension is where you actually go into the ascended state of consciousness and embodiment while you're still here in the physical but once you do that, the traditional three-dimensional people that are still left can't see you. You don't exist to them. And you require the 12 chakra system to get there. So all of this is taking place according to plan at this particular point in time. So as we transition, we must go through all of this because eventually what's going to happen is this is what I've noticed. And I am a person who really notices what's going on out there. We are now coming across, and Nicole has come across, and other people that we know, children, six and seven years old, who are going through Kundalini awakenings and heart center activation. Our son started a Kundalini awakening full blown at the age of three. All of this stuff that we're going through right now, if you'll notice, it's backing up. It used to be 35 years ago, long before most of you were even here, that Kundalini awakening was an extremely rare thing. It maybe happened to maybe 5% of the population. Now we're up to about 75 or 80 percent of the population is having Kundalini awakenings, heart center awakening, and they're getting younger. And teenagers nowadays are having heart center activation, Kundalini activation. There's no support systems for them. Eventually what's going to happen is as it gets lower and lower, all of this process that you see going on with you now is going to happen in the womb before the child is even born. That's where it's going. This is called evolution. This is what's going on right now, and we're part and parcel to it. How soon are we going to see this? 200 years, 300 years down the road? No. You're, you're, you're going to see this, and it's probably already started, where you have almost like these child prodigies being born now, who from day one, and there's more and more of them all of the time. These are the ones that come fully loaded, fully loaded, and they're the precursor of where humanity is going at this particular point. So all of this is taking place in the antrustal lines. Now, 
just as another minute here, and I'm going to take just another minute here because uh, a couple of little more tidbits I want to get into. I want to get into the sexual energy part here. Sexual energy, as we know it, has been abused, mutilated, used as a tool for control, manipulation. You name it, it's been done. And what's happening is the lower chakras, the lower chakras are going to become subservient to the higher chakras, namely the heart center and also the throat center and also the third eye very shortly. That means that a major ancestral cleansing and purging has to go on. So what's happening? We're seeing at this particular point in time a couple of events that are important. I want to mention it here. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but I have. The birth rate, the birth rate on the planet is dropping dramatically and quickly. It's happened in the United States, it's happening in Canada, and it's happening in Europe, in some of the not-so-developed countries, it's not happening yet. Why is that happening? Because we have eight, going on eight billion people on the planet. I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but we can't put replace the the products and the not the products but the resources that the earth is supplying. The earth can only supply so much resources for so many people. And with the ancestral template that going on, the situation that's going on, the birth rate is dropping. And it's going to drop even more. And there's nothing that anybody can and the governments are know this. They know it. And this is a big concern. Why? Because the GDNP is going to go down and the economy is going to, instead of keep going up and up and up, it's going to start coming down and down and down. We're already seeing that with the new virus going around. So these are some of the things that are happening at this particular point. And as the ancestral templates begin to unfold, you're going to see more and more people leaving the planet. Because, how am I going to put this? Some of the ancestral templates that we have are so deeply ingrained in some people who have been so traumatized and so overloaded with these ancestral templates and lines, the whole of their genetic tree, the whole of their etheric system needs a complete re a makeover. And that means they have to go and recycle and come back again. Okay, now I hop, skipped and jumped in various different areas here with the with the video and it's getting long enough and we're up to about 43 minutes here now I think that's about long enough <laughs> don't you but I wanted to do this to explain to people and I want to mention this at the end of the video please dear friends keep in mind here I'm only sharing my experience with you what I see what I get intuitively and in many cases, it will coincide with what other people out there are saying. A lot of us are saying the same things in different words or in different ways that reach different people. And there are variations to what I'm saying. For every bloodline, for every soul group, and for every ancestral tree that is now unfolding for each individual. If you have this self-awareness, and a lot of you do, and you are experiencing mental or emotional conditions, remember, you are the creator. If you're manifesting something, it's probably ancestral right now, and you can do something about it. You just have to catch yourself, own it, 
and then change the way you do it. I use the heart center chakra. Whenever I catch myself falling into a templated ancestral pattern now, I go to the heart center and I see it, visualize it if you will, in a much more creative, positive way. But I see it from here. I don't see it in here. I see it from here. If we're going to change anything, we have to start doing it. And that way is not the only way, I'm sure. But it's one way that I know that's working for me. It takes a little time. Because we've been so conditioned to act and react a certain way, it makes it very difficult. Okay. Comments are always appreciated. If I can be more specific in certain directions, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll go from there and we'll see what happens with it. Okay. Everybody have a great day. Love you all. My way, of course. And take care.